Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to City Skylines 2. Now in the last episode, we had begun development across the river by building out our industrial harbor, complete with a subway depot, rail depot, bus depot, and a few administration offices for those guys, and a new intersection to get to and from the area and have access to the highway. All of this infrastructure was placed to prepare for our latest expansion, the development of the inner city, a high-density focused metropolis to be that will snake its way all the way up the river so with a blank canvas in front of us let's begin all right get ready for the fastest time lapse in the series so far basically i've seen how long the episode is and i decided that this is largely addressed and talked about during the episode but i wanted to show people how we arrived at this point since the previous one right what's happened in between so effectively over on the right side of the river the east side of the river just been kind of terraforming the land and i know i said that i didn't really want to do too much terraforming but for a high-density city, something with towering skyscrapers and really, really large building plots, which we'll see a little bit of later. You know, the hospital, police headquarters, all these buildings are massive and their plots are huge. So building them on uneven terrain, it's just it just doesn't look very good. So I'm creating tiered plateaus that will slowly rise up in the distance. Now for that, I realized obviously I need a northern uh, exit to my intersection. So I've kind of built two little exits that kind of go out towards this area here onto a six lane road that's going to snake up the hill. So that's where I've tried to at least somewhat work with the terrain and work with the idea of it's a hilly city. That is to say that the main kind of road going through it is going to snake around. It's not just a perfect grid. I'm going to make it a little bit more challenging for myself by saying, okay, it's snaking up the hill and we're going to have these kind of retaining walls every kilometer or so that will kind of like divide up the city a bit. Um, so hopefully that will kind of look cool in the end and work with a little bit work with the terrain for a high density part of the city anyway. Because uh, I know I said I didn't want to do too much terraforming before. Um, so I was just testing things out, following things around. Then I decided to put in the actual road. So I wanted to have a basic general layout just ready to go for the episode. So it's not super well thought out. It is. It has been relatively spaced. Like I've tried to make the spacing between everything make sense and fit for certain types of buildings and things like that. But generally speaking, we're going to be going into the episode not knowing how a lot of the stuff is going to be filled out and the minutia in between this area. But I just wanted to create some variety, use some of the terrain, use some hills, create some retaining walls, things like that. And I'm quite happy with the layout we've got. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that seems like a pretty good foundation for us to get started with. Now we can get into the nitty gritty, into the side streets, let time play, get people moving in and check out the flow of everything. Obviously, this is going to be a high-density region, so we want it to be as detailed as what's going on across the river from us, but even more so, as you can imagine, layers upon layers of transport routes are going to be needed for dealing with this higher volume of people. Now, before we get into the actual gameplay, I just wanted to quickly touch on where we're currently at in the game, as a little bit of time has played through that time-lapse. So we're closing in on $12 million in the bank right now, a healthy 120000 per hour, which is awesome. 22,000 population, we just crossed that milestone, and we've literally just entered into October, because it is midnight, so obviously the day and night cycle is turned off right now, just to brighten things up while we're actually working on the building. So I've got a bit of a checklist of a few things that I want to go over and get to today as we start filling out this area, but I think the first thing is just to start adding some services in, and then we can start laying out smaller streets, adding some of the zoning for various buildings, commercial, and so on. Uh, so, broadly speaking, just here at the very beginning, wanted to mention what I'm planning to put where, so I just thought I'd open up this tool so you can see my mouse cursor easier. Along the riverbank here, I'm planning on having a lot of commerce, big high-density commerce, facing out to the river. I just think that'd be kind of nice. Also, it's close to where the cargo and industrial sort of services area is, so hopefully goods can just make their way straight in that way, cutting down on traffic. That's part of the idea. And then here, we'll have a lot of residential, so hopefully they can make it down into the shops and stuff as well without, you know, too much traversal um, time. What's the word? Without taking too much time to get there using the roads and stuff like that. Right, so we've also got this big main street here, which is now squirreling up the hill and going around to this junction. I was thinking, again, it's a really big main street in the heart of the city. Probably going to have a lot of high-density commerce rolling alongside it as well. So we have commerce on both flanks of our residential center, and then some services and things dotted around, parks, etc. So that's the broad idea. No industry here. People are still going to make their way up north to go to industry. And uh, we might add some more offices and things down in the south. I don't want to add too many offices right now 
because that takes away from our workforce that are highly educated. And we have a, a healthy-ish number of highly educated and well-educated, but we're really suffering on the well-educated, the purple there. Uh, and that's basically from the collegiate level, right? From people graduating from college and got a healthy amount of people in there but we want more and more people to go into that if we can or set up a new college out here in the future so people can basically <laughs> what we need to do is stop them going to university so either create loads of jobs at the well-educated level or just let them naturally hit the cap of 2000 in the university therefore they've got nowhere to go and they'll just graduate from college and will increase that workforce. What we need it for is several of, the, several of the bigger factories are lacking parts of the workforce, specifically in that pink slash purple well-educated category. So that's just something I thought I would mention. That's where we're at in the world right now. The little pips that are going on, a little bit of high rent, haven't added those mods yet, still debating whether or not I should, just kind of holding out for patches. But if this becomes a real problem, then we'll definitely address that, I think. All right, so let's get to it. So the first thing is that Speaking of education, the first thing that I think is going to be important is putting down two elementary schools. Again, Colossal Order have kind of talked about this. It just seems like the rates for people going to school are a bit crazy, but 1,500 students in that elementary school, 1,500 in this one, they're just always maxed out. I've only got two on the west side of the river, so on the east side, we're going to put two right next to each other because I just feel like we're going to need it if there's going to be a, such a bigger population here. So what I was planning on doing was just starting with this area here for some of the educational services. Um, so we'll start with an elementary school. Now, because we've got a healthy amount of money, we can obviously uh, relocate and move these around just ever so slightly. So actually, we'll start with the high school. High school is going to be in this region as well, right next to them. And I was going to push it just a little bit further back. So it looks like we've got three tiles of space to work with there. So what I'll do is we'll just start with an alleyway and go three in and cut this across just temporarily for a moment just to see how that looks. Slam down the high school. Like so, and that just worked right up to the corner there. That was actually perfect, so that's good. Right, so high school is in position, and we'll set all these districts. I need to create the areas, um, you know, using the district tool and everything. It's called the area tool now. So I have to do that in a moment also. So if I've worked this out correctly, I think if we bring an alleyway up here, maybe we could just bring it straight forward like that. We should have enough room for two elementary schools back to back. Because initially what I was thinking was an elementary school like this, and then I was initially thinking, okay, we can add a children's clinic and it would fit in really nicely. But I realized that with only 1,500 potential students, I just thought we're going to hit that cap like immediately. So might as well just pop down too. There's no high density version in this building, like one that, um, you know, is a taller version of it or anything like that. So it is what it is. Now, why didn't that go all the way to the edge? Okay, well, if we start the zoning from here and then we turn off snap to zone grid we won't snap to the grid i'm looking at now that continues our zones nicely across the way and it lets us pop in the elementary schools back to back looking a little bit better that way i think right so in at the back then i was thinking children's clinic on this one 24,060 xp so that's going to basically give us five percent health for students obviously only of this school we can't fit one in here because we kind of bump up against that road and i do want to pretty much keep that there Although, would this fit? That wouldn't fit with it. Yeah, so we could just do one of these, um, a little playground in between the two to make the area look like it is actually connected. It's one area rather than two separate schools. Might as well just give them the upgrade right now because they're going to need it. So basically, one school has a playground and one school has um, a clinic. So 1,500 students are able to go to a clinic basically and get that 5% benefit. And I guess, what's the benefit with this? This is 10% well-being within 300 meters, but 5% well-being for the students themselves. So <laughs> it's kind of interesting running a little experiment here on these two schools. What's more important, uh, you know, having better well-being or possibly being more healthy, <laughs> I guess. And uh, we'll see. We'll see how they all turn out. A little rivalry maybe between the two schools. All right, so I was just looking around at what buildings to use next, and I noticed that our high school is sitting there doing totally fine, but our two elementary schools are filling up fast. We're almost all ready to 1,000 students on this particular elementary school, and the next one over only has 74. Now, the reason for that, I think, is that it's all coming from the west side of the river. Of course, there is nobody living on the east side of the river yet, so it's spillover, which indicates that we've got a real problem on this side. Not enough places to go to school. We've only got two elementary schools here, one in the north and one in the south, and both of them are just full up right now. So clearly, we need another elementary school over there, but I don't want to get too sidetracked. 
I don't know where it's going to go, but it's obviously something that I'm just going to have to write down and make a note of that these guys need help. Because Hawkstown has grown a lot. 8,000 people live here, 1,000 children alone. We never gave them their own elementary school. There is a university, but maybe across from it or something we could get rid of some of these houses and just put down another elementary school. Possibly in this little location here would actually be a decent fit. And right next to a lot of the houses down here actually increasing their land value. So we'll consider that. But... I just thought it was interesting because this is the inside, the inside, let's say, oh, the outside of the river, but the inside of this main road, elementary school. It's the closest one to this side of the river in terms of if you're driving across on the highway, you would hit this school first. And I think that's the reason it's filled up. I don't think it's the fact that this one has a playground and the other one doesn't, but that would be kind of funny if it was. Uh, but yeah, I just thought it was kind of interesting to see how the game decides which one to bring people to. And of course, it's 5.20 a.m. right now, so I don't see anyone at the school. Except, like, a couple of people just walking around now. Maybe they're teachers or the principal or something. But um, I imagine that these are students that are, quote, enrolled. And maybe over time at 9 a.m. or whatever, we'll see them actually coming over and filling in. Uh, just thought I would mention all that. Anyways, next thing, transport. So... This area is designed with trams in mind. That's why I've gone with a six-lane road here and a lot of four-lane roads. Although for a dense area, four lanes are kind of needed anyway. Arguably, these two-lane roads might have a little bit of trouble. We'll see. But anyway, six-lane roads. I think the plan for this anyway will be that we'll have trams rolling down the center and maybe bus lanes on the side and stuff like that. Uh, we're also going to have a subway, so let's get started with that. Now, trams aren't going to be in this episode, it'll be in a future one, because I'm not sure where we're going to actually put the tram depot, where they're going to roll out. But I imagine it would be somewhere near the highway, like down here. And as you can see, we've got a bridge going across, so they could roll across that one and roll across the center here as well. So we just need to develop out the town on this side, but today, just focusing on this side for now. So, with all that in mind, trams will be coming, just wanted to preface that, but we're going to pop down a bus station. So it can be upgraded with a taxi stop and an extra platform and electric bus recharging station. So I was thinking somewhere in here would be a nice area and just tuck it way in at the back until it can't go any further. And that actually leaves us with a gap of two tiles right here. And for that, I was thinking our first metro station, our underground subway station could be positioned here. So if we pop it right next to it, it's a good connection point, 50,000. And it's sort of aimed from, you know, east to west, basically in terms of uh, its, its layout. So, of course, we're gonna connect the subway line in underground, bring it forward and then connect it in here, but also have a network of other stops and things to think about too. Something I'm, you know, struggling in my head to think about is how, how frequent or how far do these stops need to be? If you have a look at the scales that we're dealing with, from there to there is one kilometer, right? So that's just one kilometer. So you'd think that this station would actually service this entire area, at least that's what I would think. So maybe this would come out and roll up the hill or something, go up a different direction. Maybe this rolls out into the other part of the city. I don't know, I haven't figured out the layout for everything else yet, because it's, it's it's a lot to work with. Basically, it took me a while just to plan this one out, and it's still I'm still winging parts of it. But it was nice that that just fits in there quite nicely, so that should be a decent little connection spot. So the other thing I wanna do, just very quick, is just get rid of some of the crosswalks. We don't need that one, and we don't need that one. And this way, we're just encouraging people to, if they come out of here, just cross here, rather than crossing at multiple different places. Now, the other thing at the back of the school, I thought would be kind of nice to add some supplemental parks and playgrounds and things. So we've got a park that will fit in here really nicely. Small playgrounds, maybe just up at the edge. And maybe the dog park could be the next one. And then I'll blend these with some of the developer tools as well in just a bit. All right, so this area is filling out nicely. So bus station, what could we do with it? The extra platforms, the taxi stop. I don't think we need that, but the taxi stop, sure, why not? We'll throw that in there now. It'll probably get some use already, actually, I would imagine, with people kind of moving in and coming over here already. Okay, that's looking good. So if you're wondering what the cars are doing on the road, they're just heading up to that industrial area in the north, so there's just another way to get there from the highway now. So if you're coming in the highway, you don't have to go through the town anymore. You can just kind of get off at this interchange, go all the way up. So that's helping traffic just a little bit as well um, from the west side of the town. Speaking of, there's actually been... It looks like a little accident here. Wow, our pine trees have really grown now fully. Oh no, a bus got hit. Damn. Hopefully everybody's alright. Oh yeah, so the next thing I was thinking of adding is... I want to add some of the biggest buildings first. So I was thinking a large park needs to be in this area just generally. So a large plaza fits really nicely right here. Keeping zoning intact all the way around it. So we'll plan, plan that one down. And we have our walkway to go straight across already. So that's kind of nice. 
Something else that's going to be a real challenge in this area will be parking. So I want to get ahead of that early. Now, obviously, we want it to be a city, uh, this the denser part of the city. We want a lot of people to be able to walk around it, not have to rely on parking a lot. But we're going to have to provide some parking in multiple places. So we're going to go here, 150,000 for the overground car park. So the multi-story car park right next to that kind of bridge that's going over to the other part of the city. So I think that's a good spot for it. Um, got room now to bring in a road here. Make sure that we're on the zoning grid, just like so. And I want to line it up with that. So is that, that's 208 meters. Does it keep our zones intact? It looks like it does. So we'll just snap into that. I'm gonna redo this one because it seems like the zoning is broken on that. So just bring this straight back out. There we go. Zones are intact. Feels good, man. All right, we'll just upgrade that. No problem. Okay, so what I was thinking down here is at the back of the car park where the hooligans will be playing around. We could give them a skate park. So actually, little do they know. See, the, the teens, they think they're rebellious. They think they're crazy. They think they're against the man. But really, I've planned for it all along that we know exactly what they're going to be doing and we're going to actually cater for it. And we've designed it so that this is where their thing goes and where they're going to hang out. So we need a skate park, which is a sport park, is it? Yep. Pop it in right there. Why the hell not? And I didn't actually think about this, but this might work quite nicely, which is if we bring this out further. Now, the terrain is a little misshapen here. Maybe actually I'll just redo that really quickly. Yeah, so what I'm going to do really quickly is just get the highway tool. No, sorry, the sound barriers. Now, I'll put sound barriers on the highway here. Just on the very edge of the highway as there's going to be some residential and just people over there generally just just to curtail curtail some of that noise that's going to be coming from there but also safety it's just a big fence so you don't fall onto the uh <laughs> onto the highway onto the off-ramp all right so let's use this area again so we know we want that skate park we'll get our alley tool bring this all the way down so skate park will sit nicely in there at the back of the car park now, I don't know if this is going to fit in. That's what she said. But uh, I'm looking to put the radio tower thing here. The radio mast. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's so close. But it's just, unfortunately, a little too close to the, um, the barrier. And then maybe we can just smoothen that terrain back out so it doesn't look so crazy. Is that better? So, skate park still kind of at the back of the... Um, car park and then we have a radio mass just a little bit further behind that hopefully it doesn't uh, bother the kids too much or affect them so wireless network antenna that's going to increase our range by 250 meters and then we have the 1500 gigabits per second upgrade on top of the already 3000 i think it normally has let's just check that yeah it's got 3000 now the telecom tower is something we probably need in this area for the amount of data this entire place is probably going to end up using but it's pretty big and it costs a lot in the Mastin upgrade it's also upkeep is like a hundred times higher than this so it's five times better network capacity but it's upkeep is 20 times higher for upkeep but its cost is a million whereas this is only 10,000 so that's a hundred times more expensive basically um, so yeah, it's just a fairly expensive thing. So I'll definitely put one down. It's obviously going to need it. And I feel like down near the industrial area, we'll probably still have a lot of coverage or we'll just choose a location somewhere up here where there are some service buildings, like maybe like near a hospital or, or something like that, police headquarters, that kind of thing. So once I figure out where that's going to go, that should give extra coverage to the entire area, but no harm in having just a smaller one for now anyway. So the next thing then across from the elementary school, I was kind of thinking that it would make sense to have a soccer field. Uh, aka football some people get very touchy when you say soccer but it's called soccer in the game that's why i call it that i mean i call it football because i'm from ireland so i call it football but soccer is just what i'm used to saying now just so everyone knows what i mean and i say american football i don't call that so i don't call anything just football i always let people know what i'm talking about anyways um so let's see i think a height of eight here would be good one two three four five six seven eight and that gives us room to do four and four in terms of uh, building sizes. So I'm gonna turn off the guidelines now. Just go down to there. Keeping our zones nice and nice and tight. So, large sports parks, soccer field. 160,000, 300 X feet, bonk. We're actually getting kind of close to 
large city. It's going to be a cash injection of 3.2 milli with 21 extra map expansion points, which I really look forward to because um, I want to basically build out further out this way, increase the kind of the capacity around the ships, but also connect up the highway from here to there. So there's a lot of um, map permits that we need to do all that. All right, so that's looking good. Soccer fields. I think a general rec area, recreation area, would be kind of nice for this. So let's just, uh, can we do that? Bring an alley out this way as well. Not sure how far it's going to have to go just yet, but we'll just bring it to that size. Parking. Medium car parks. One, two, three. There's a lot. But it's for the school and for the sports park. I feel like it makes sense. It's for the soccer field. <laughs> sports park. But also we want then other sports facilities around here. So tennis courts. Now the tennis courts, people actually pointed out to me. I was thinking like, oh yeah, we could put one in like that. But then, if you were looking at it logically, it's like, well, someone could theoretically hit their ball over and go into the court that way. So you wouldn't want that to happen. So they should really be rotated. So let's just get our standard road again. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have to come in here and then move this and latch it onto the side. And maybe just two in a row would be all right. Do we fit basketball? Yes, it fits perfect. Okay, great. So a basketball court there. So yeah, that's all right. So we've got our two basketball courts, four tennis courts in total. Uh, soccer field, multiple, lots of parking there for people, and then we can just extend this out so that's a little bit better. Right, so the next thing, let's get rid of that, was welfare. Police and administration, the administration section, welfare office. 110,000 helps the less fortunate by increasing well-being in the surrounding neighborhood. So I thought this would be good near the soccer field and near some of those sports things. It's kind of like, oh, this is like the the council's local area for putting down like facilities for people and recreational facilities and public facilities for what, what do you call it just like public parks i guess yeah so it seemed to make sense to have the welfare building near there i mean <laughs> i was thinking about this like it's the most ornate welfare office like in the world but it looks like a high school maybe and a fancy one at that like a private school but yeah just a bit of a weird building. So I just thought I would mention that because if you're wondering my logic is like, why would you have it next to these? It's because it is massive. So because of that, I think it works next to some of the parks and things. Whereas if it was a more realistic, in my opinion anyway, office, it would just be on the front street next to some shops and things. You know, that's the way they usually are. Um, so just thought I would, uh, you know, at least give you my, my insight and my thoughts as to why I've done it that way. All right. So yeah, looking good. I'm happy enough with this. So we've got our high school, elementary schools some park facilities around the area, a welfare office, a bus station, an underground subway station. Uh, we have some parking, skate park, radio mass, so things are looking good. Not much left to go now, we'll just start filling out roads and such. Um, one thing that's gonna be a little radical, looking forward to seeing what people think about this. Unfortunately that this is a little bit wavy. There's not much I can do about it. It was very difficult to get it like that, as good as I have. And it took me a oh, super long time to get this quite flat, but I'm quite happy with how that looks now. And then obviously I need to do something with how this makes its way up here. It doesn't have to, but it would be nice to have some sort of thing like that. But you could also have a retaining wall that just looks a bit better connecting into the edge of the highway, maybe. Anyways, what I was thinking is monuments. Landmarks, a little bit more interesting. Very expensive. 160,000 upkeep. I was thinking of going with the Grand Hotel. So I had a look at a few of these different things. And the Grand Hotel, I thought would be kind of cool to place it like right here on an angle. Maybe I'm crazy doing that, but I just thought that would be kind of interesting. So it would face out towards the bridge and the river and the, you know, the, the sea and everything. So it won't fit naturally like here, but if we just push it in a little bit further. So it obviously needs a road connection, but we could just put a little alley between the two. Snap to... Is there no snap to building? Oh, because we're on upgrade, sorry. Snap to the sides of building. So we'll just start from the center of it and push this straight out. And if we go 90 degrees, turn off the zone grid thing. Just go 90 degrees and connect out at some point. So this will be a bit that's a little misshapen. I wonder, can we do something with that? Or could I just get rid of that bit and connect that in? I don't know, might have a real problem with this now. Let's see. No, that actually worked and it cleared it up a little bit. So again, just have to get rid of the crosswalk. And I don't think we need lights or anything like that. Not in this area. So that's what we got. Grand Hotel right there on the edge. If if I had more time, and I really did try my best, <laughs> but I would like to, you know, level this retaining wall a bit better. It's just a little bit bumpy right in front of the hotel, which is a bit strange. Um, but yeah, we'll put some trees 
and things there that could look nice. You could actually use the same patterns that are in here, out here, and that could look kind of cool. Now, it does create, you know, some weirdness because we're breaking the grid quite a lot doing that, but um, I don't mind. I think it'll be okay. I can go straight across from here then, and that should be fine with the road. All right, so let me just think for a second of where the next roads are going to go. Maybe this could come all the way up to... Let's stay on the grid, please. So staying on the grid, up to the back of the park, and then around. We're going to make it so that you actually exit that way. But it's a one way out. Would that be right? So people would be crossing traffic there, but we could put some lights there and it's a, a decent way to flush out from the bottom. That does only leave us with one way, one exit, really. So only one lane turns left. That seems crazy to me. Why would that be the case? Surely two. Maybe it's because of the angle. Not too sure. One lane cutting in seems really not ideal. <laughs> And then this has two lanes that can turn to the right. Hmm. Yeah, even doing that, that's so weird. I've added four on this side. This lane will take that left. This lane will just go straight ahead. And then we're left with a nothing. Like this doesn't have any connection. How strange. I don't know what I can do about that, so I just, I'll just have to leave it. I can't really think about what I can do. Now, if it starts to get backed up or something, we'll have to make some sort of adjustment. But, um, oh well. So it, <laughs> The whole point of having roads with this many lanes is that, yeah, multiple lanes can kind of go in at the same time. Now, I know what's going to happen. If we have this going off to the right, that'll make a bit more sense, because this will probably be adjusted so it can go right. This will be like forward and right, and this will be forward and left. Let's just test that just really quickly. If I had another six-lane road coming off the center here. Yeah, we've got forward and left. Forward. Forward and right, and then right only. I don't know why they don't just let you decide that. Because at a certain point, it's like... It's a bit unpredictable, I feel like. But anyway, whatever. We'll just have to see how it all shakes out. Go all the way straight across. Hopefully that's just like on the zone. Yes, it is. And then we're going to cut straight down the middle of it. So just as if we were following that road. Oh, you love to see it. I love it when the zones work, man. <laughs> it's so gratifying. And when they break, it's so heartbreaking. Yeah, so to fill these this gap here, we could have another little connecting road going across this bit. But maybe with pathing and stuff, we can work around it. Empire Street. It's kind of a cool name. All right. I think that might be it for where I plan to put things. Now, the last thing I want to do is then put down some pathways that are going to connect these areas. Um, and once that's down, then it's kind of like, yeah, just let, let some houses appear and see what we need. All right. I've added a few pathways, but I've decided to kind of hold off on adding more just for now because I'm going to let buildings kind of just appear how they want. So... Normally what I've been doing before is I'll go like, okay, I want a 4x4 four four type building here and another 4x4 four four here. And I let them zone individually because I wanted a certain type of building to appear. So that's what I've done pretty much everywhere on this side of the map. But here, if I try to make the same buildings appear over and over again, all the skyscrapers are going to basically be the exact same height. And that would look a bit weird. We want a kind of a staggered skyline that will look kind of nice, right? So I'm just going to let the game do whatever it wants with it. And be kind of flippant about it because I'll just destroy the ones I don't like and then put pathways between areas that seem to make sense. So we'll see how that kind of shakes out. Maybe it's a bit more of a chaotic way of doing things, but I think it could work. Um, one other thing then, just while we're here, while I spotted it, I want to bring that forward to about there and just cut that in. A little pathway that cuts into the edge of the thing there. Same with this side as well. You want to actually join it on. Yeah, whatever. All right, cool. Okay, so let's start the zoning process. So let's see, EU mixed housing. So the mixed, I feel like because this is a, a quite a big main street that's going along this way, this would be a good area to have some of the mixed buildings popping in. So four by six, well really, I think I will just let it do whatever it wants. So about to there, but this can continue all the way down. And then in at the back here, we'll just have medium density housing. Let's leave it like that. Let's see how we get on. Uh, similarly, on this side, again, shops, shops and res and living, shops and living here as well. So that's by five, five deep, three, six deep, six by six. Let's try six by four. See how that works out. 
Uh, same with kind of here. So kind of want it on the corners, six by four. So that's going to be like that. Yep, say the same here really, just fill all that in. And bring that all the way to about there, maybe. I'm not sure about this side actually, I might leave that because that's might gonna have parking and services and things in there. All right, so then medium density housing. Actually in at the back here, let's just go for the high density. So this is a big high density patch right here. I'm gonna go for another high density block right there. Let's see maybe near the parking down here low rent so just a bunch of low rent housing there and for the most part i think i'm just going to go with medium density everywhere else and then eventually over time we can always just then change it so it becomes high density if there's room and demand for it so i think just medium density everywhere else depending how they pop in and what gets made we'll put some pathways in between them so it's going to be really chaotic building at the beginning here uh, actually, I'd say something like that's totally fine, and maybe some shops. No, the shops are going to be down there, so yeah, we'll just fill all that in, whatever. I might leave that gap, and we'll bring a pathway straight through that. And this can be pretty much the same. So this is still the main street, so I might, again, continue some of the shops along this way. Seems to make sense. All right, so the, the light blue is our mixed shops on the bottom, housing above. The green is pretty much all medium density, except for this area out here is low rent. And this area here is going to be our first high density. So we'll see how that all shakes out. Uh, so yeah, I just want to finish the pathway off here. Now, something that we actually haven't added is like services for this area, really. So what they're going to need is their own crematorium. I'm just going to stick it out here rather lazily because a lot of these services buildings are going to be moved, are going to be somewhere over here or up here in the future. This isn't really going to have any of its own other than like some of those educational facilities and, and the bus station stuff, but it's not going to have its own police headquarters or anything like that. So what we can do just really, because we have unlocked all these buildings, we have the fire station. We are going to have a hospital and we're going to have a police station. Oh yeah, and the city hall, of course. So police headquarters. So as you can see, these buildings are huge. So I have to think about like, where can they go that would make sense? So knowing their sizes now after putting them down, I can kind of plan it a bit better. But I also just thought if the city is gonna be kind of this general size, I didn't really want them tucked in the bottom left of it, right? So we want them to be a bit more central, maybe center on the right, center on the left kind of thing. That's, that was at least my idea. So it'll probably go up here somewhere, but with a bit of a better layout when that's done. Uh, it just didn't seem to make sense tucking it in right at the bottom here. Um, but yeah, actually, and then, like I was saying, the tram depot and stuff will be over here. So it might make sense just near along the highway. So they've got quick access to get out, cross over, or to get onto the highway themselves. That would probably make sense. So something like that would probably be what I'll do. But temporarily, we'll just say temporarily, they can all sit up here and we'll just move them when we need to. Obviously it costs a bunch of money to do that, but it's fine. We're making good money now, so I'm not too worried about it. Hopefully we keep making good money. Uh, is that it then? I think that might be it. We'll have to do some of these bus routes out and then we have to do the commercial area down here. Actually, yes, let me just do that real quick. So high density business is gonna go down here. So it took me a really long time, but I've largely flattened this area out now and I'm quite happy with it. But I want them to be actually six by six. So that's one, two, three, four, five. That's a six by six and there. Right, so we'll cut in a road right there, and we'll probably just have them be pedestrian cro um, crossings, walkways. So that's the terrain we're working with here. Pretty steep incline. Something like that. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we bring this all the way up. And hopefully we can keep those zones somewhat intact if we connect this in. Yes, okay, that looks good. How far does that go in? That goes in pretty good, actually. Yeah, better than I thought. So we'll let that appear. So the idea was that this will be just commerce. Loads of commerce connected down to the industrial area. So hopefully they can get the goods they need quickly. Um, but it's probably going to need parking and a few other things down here as well. So maybe actually this road in could be a regular road. But the back streets could be the pedestrian walkways. That might make a bit more sense, actually, thinking about it. I'll just bring this down a bit further. All right, so yeah, it's just I'm just thinking out loud, but we'll just try to update this now to a regular road. Hopefully it doesn't get like too busy, too jam-packed. Same with this one. 
So we could slam it down on the bottom there. I'm just trying to think how cars are going to be making their way into that. Would that be ideal? It might be alright actually doing that. Yeah, so that would have to be a regular road, obviously, to get to it. Although I don't know if it does need to be. It'd be kind of interesting if it doesn't, but yeah. Give it a regular road so they can go in that way, come back out, and get out. So that junction would be probably quite busy. What was that? That was the hotel. All right, and that's going to be our street with shops on either side. Uh, I suppose let's try to encourage people just to get there. Now, if I see it being overcrowded, that's what we'll do. All right, let's let time play. Buildings can now appear. It's interesting to watch them popping up in different places. Hopefully our power network, our water, and everything can handle all this. Yeah, we're not making enough electricity. That's something I've been meaning to do is unlock more. We're importing and paying for it, which is fine. We obviously have loads of money. But ideally, we'd be making our own. People did ask me to get the hydroelectric power plant. Yeah, I think now the fact that I'm not going to be building anything up the river anymore in terms of the, um, you know, initially I was thinking of having a ferry go up there. The bridges are too low. The river's not wide enough. But it would make sense now to have a hydro power plant up there. So I'll definitely do that. So that will give us hopefully some good power. Um, the other ones then would be the gas power plant. Don't know about nuclear. That'll obviously come much later. It's 5 million. And then there is the solar power plant. I had a look at the solar power plant. It's not actually very ideal for this particular map because our longitude and latitude is such that... I know the sun is in the sky and everything, but all through winter, you would just have like no power coming from it, pretty much, because the sun only shines for like four or five hours in the day. It'll set by 3 to 4 p.m. really early. So I feel like we're obviously... We must be quite far north wherever we are. Uh, so I feel like solar doesn't really make that much sense for us. Like, it helps, but its footprint is huge. It's like a really big building. And we don't get that much from it for a lot of the year. Because your batteries will only really work for day and night. It won't really work for months and months. Um, you know, multiple days and multiple nights. So I'm debating it. I wouldn't mind, obviously, just putting it down to see it tested out and stuff just to show people. But I do think that nuclear, gas, hydroelectric, that's the way to go. Never tried looking at the geothermal, actually, so that could be kind of cool, too. Anyway, we started at 22,000. We're climbing, so we have to do our bus routes as well. i got to be careful with these, because if you put them down wrong and then you delete them, they can break your zoning, and it makes me want to kill myself. So I want to get that right. So what I'll do first off, though, is just start with the bus tool, bus line tool, and we'll just click one of these stations. So maybe platform one here, if you want to look at it that way. So which way do you make it? Yeah, you can come out and go straight to the left. So we can just put down waypoints now and then build the stops after the fact. I'll tell you what, before I do that, let's just actually create these area tools and define different areas. So the bottom of the map, I've come up with a name for it. I'm going to call it South Bank, which I think is a decent name for what it is. All right, so that's South Bank, our sort of industrial cargo area. The next one, we're going to do along the river. So this will go pretty far up, actually, but for now, we'll just leave it to there. Maybe turn on Chirper, actually, in a bit and see what people are saying. Shepherd Creek. Um, so now I was thinking R Rosie actually came up with this one as well, which was Sunset Valley. Well, she said Sunset View or something, and I said Sunset Valley. So Sunset. So you go down to the Sunset to do some shopping. I like the idea of that. All right. I have to adjust those a little bit. It's, it's going to be called Fairview, which I actually randomly generated this name when I was kind of testing things, and I quite liked it. It was called Concord's End, or Concord End, I think. So I kind of like that because it is kind of the end of the map. I can't remember if it was Concord's End or Concord End, but let's just leave it with Concord End. All right, I've made my first bus route. It's kind of crazy, but I haven't put down the stops yet. So basically, if we just follow it really quickly, we're starting here, and then we come out, obviously just following the blue line now. We're heading all the way down with several stops along the kind of main street all the way down onto the sunset where we have our first shops. Then, because because the area isn't done, what will happen in the future is this kind of route is going to link across the other side. But because of that, can't happen yet. We're just going to double back in here and come back around. So that's kind of a temporary thing until, you know, roadworks are done and the area is expanded and then the bus will have a new route to kind of go around. In fact, it could even go around down that way and come up and turn into it. But it just depends how things are going to go. So this is a local route around Fairview. So as you come back up uh, over the sunset, you'll come down past the hotel and then down one of these main streets here. Turn left, 
down another street, turn left, and then go up and back out and around the school. So it's, it is windy, it kind of loops in on itself, there's no need for an alternate route, um, but it's just one of these things that I felt like is necessary until we get um, future expansions to link these together and it would make a little bit more sense then. We're also going to need a route that's going to connect Fairview to Hawkstown and then another one that's going to connect Fairview up to Concord End. So we have to do that as well. But I'm just going to put down some of these stops first. So the EU bus shelter stop would be good. So, and then we could just tuck these in. Now this is where I worry about it breaking zones. But as far as I know, if you just pop it down, it'll be okay. But it's if you put it down and then remove it. So I'm actually just going to save the game really quickly beforehand. All right, so we should be all connected up. Now, I'm going to do something different. We head down to our bus depot. We're going to give it the electric bus maintenance upgrade. Bonk. And then we can also give this station the electric bus recharging station. It provides further charging capacity for buses, which increases their range significantly. The electric bus maintenance upgrade at the bus depot is needed first, so we just got that. All right, so we'll do that. So I think that means, it says their range is upgraded. Does that just mean they don't have to go back to the depots frequently? Or does it mean you can make longer routes? I'm not too sure. Um, but we'll just have a look at it really quickly. So we have the bus line number seven. So we'll just call this um, the 101 to Fairview, or the Fairview loop, really. So the 101. So anything on this side of the river is probably going to be the 10 something, or the one something. You know, it's triple digits. Whereas on the left side, it was just double digits. So that's kind of good. All right, and then we'll switch it to electric buses and, yeah, five vehicles, whatever. All right, now, with the existing bus stops, we're just going to make another route that connects Hawkstown over to Fairview. Now, in future, the train station will be able to cater to this as well, and trams are going to be a thing also on this side of town. So I foresee a lot of people being bunched up trying to get over between the two areas, but that will be hopefully alleviated when the train station gets put in place. So basically, uh, the purple line, the connecting line, so it's our platform two. We just go out around the roundabout, follow the highway all the way across. We're into Hawkstown. We hit one of the stops here, hit another stop there, and then we just do a little loop on the roundabout, come back down, and then go back out. So just hitting the stops all the way. So as we come back into the town, we're a left-hand driver, remember? So we hit that stop, because why not? And then we hit that one as well, and then we're over to the bus station so people can maybe make a change or a connection or whatever. Um, maybe a bit unnecessary hitting those stops, but it just felt like if we're passing them anyway, you might as well pull in. Okay, uh, so that's going to be the... So yeah, let's just open that one up as well. So that's kind of a purplish route, and that's going to be the 102. Hawkstown. Because we're sort of... start. All the 10 starts from this side of town. So it's going to Hawkstown. So 102 to Hawkstown, I think makes sense. 11 kilometers. We can make that electric as well, hopefully if it works. And... Um, Maybe increase the old ticket price on that one because the electric vehicle is going quite far. Nice and quiet though, hopefully. Seven vehicles assigned. Yeah, let's just make it eight. See how that goes for us. And then finally, we'll just get another route to connect us up to the industry area. The good thing with the connections here, by the way, is that if people do end up getting off here, they can then get the bus that will actually take you straight over to the industries out this way. So we've created connections now from Fairview. If you get to Hawkstown, you can easily take the same stop into Pineview. So if you work out there, no problem. Uh, same if you work anywhere else, actually. So everything is actually being connected, which is actually pretty good. I'm quite happy about that. I didn't really necessarily think about it, but these two stops are super busy and important because a lot of they basically provide connections to everywhere already on the left side. So that's good. Concord End is our little industrial estate, which needs a bit of a refactor because it was just kind of a temporary thing while I was thinking about building docks and then I never did. But what I'm going to do really quickly is just put down a few of these little stops here. And I'm going to make a shuttle bus that goes around for free. And then just stops at the station. So starting here, first port of call and we just loop around and then loop around here. So that's that. But this one is unique because it will just be the Concord shuttle. The Concord shuttle is going to have a free ticket price, four vehicles, totally fine. It could probably just only run during the day thinking about it, but we should be able to afford it. I don't think it's a problem. Uh, all right, so now that the stops are in place, we can basically open back up our bus tool and start again. So. 
I don't know if that one's still there. No, it looks like it's gone. Good. All right, so we'll just make this again yellowy orange and say, okay. Starting here, and we're just going to go straight up to one of these stops, and the shuttle can then take you around. And it's, that's it. It's just one stop to the next one, and then come back down. So the shuttle will just get you to where you need to go if you have a problem. I don't think I need to stop at the other things. We'll just continue on and just go in. All right, so that's going to be then the, the 103 to Concord because we're starting again at this bus stop, so that's fine. Now, that's a long line, eight vehicles. I guess we'll just have to feel it out and see how it goes. We'll make that an electric bus as well. Why not? That's a pretty big range. <laughs> Thinking about it. Length of the distance from the start, da da da, -da. Line usage refers to how busy the line is. Values below 100% mean vehicles are not running at full capacity. Yeah, that's fine. Hmm. Okay, well, I guess we'll just have to see how it all goes. So the buses are now going to start rolling out. So we did our bus upgrade in the last episode. And we've now got 105 potential buses out of this one. And I think we've got 20 on our other bus depot. So we should start seeing lots of buses rolling out now. All the various colors. So the kind of light green teal color. We know that's the Fairview line. And where are you heading? Oh, you're taking the other way around. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. They don't always follow the same path. They start from different points on the path. Uh, the yellow ones, they're going to be going for the industry, for Concord. The purple is going to be going between both regions, both uh, sides of the river, until we upgrade it. So that's quite cool. You know, we've got a lot of flickering because of the lighting. It's actually, while I'm doing routes and thinking about it, the cargo routes for our freight, shipping freight, needs to be reduced. I found that the usage is quite low, so we'll just pop them down to two. And I think the other one can only have one, actually. Yeah. Uh, and that's just because I found that a lot of them are coming in constant, consistently, but not actually delivering that much. They're kind of coming in in batches of two, and you'll find one with nothing on it, and then one with something on it. Uh, although, actually, that one's a different ship altogether. But anyways, that's what I had been observing. So I'm also going to just rename this one. This one is Melcom off to the left. So Melcom, and the other one is Roslyn Heights off to the right. So Roslyn Heights. Looks like we're importing and using that one a lot more. Don't know why. Something else I've noticed is that we only ever seem to be um, exporting. Hang on. Cargo. Da, da, da. Destination is our cargo harbor. Is that unloading? Yeah. I just don't understand that. It's something I've noticed. And it's literally the exact example I wanted to talk about. They just unloaded rock here. Now, rock is something that we make so much of. It's 634, no, sorry, wrong thing. 1,100 tons a month in excess. And we just imported it. I just watched a ship come in and deliver it. So something I've noticed is that like every one of my storage areas, you know, the cargo areas like this, they generally have about 4,000 tons of material. And they generally have about every, like a little bit of everything. It's almost like the game has decided like it wants to hit a certain quota of everything. So let's just say the game is saying, I want 150 tons of everything in the game. And any more than that will export it. Any less than that will import it. I think that's what the game is doing. But I really don't know why we'd ever import rock or wood. Things that we just have like, a massive overabundance in is kind of confusing to me. Uh, so if people have any idea, let me know. But even Colossal Order recently were saying, like, you know, they need to be more clear about how the economy works. And I'm guessing, anyway, they probably don't know fully themselves exactly what's going on. Uh, we've got a lot of people piling up at this stop now. That's good. So what time is it? It's 3.48. So tomorrow morning, we'll probably see the, the majority of people actually using the buses and stuff and coming in. So I'll tell you what, it's getting kind of a bit awkward day and night time. So we'll just brighten things up. Let these buildings keep appearing. We still haven't had the high density buildings appear yet. And we do have a demand for offices, but I'm waiting. The reason I'm not putting down any offices just yet is because I want a special industrial building, the switch on building. We're so close to it. I need two more manufacturing buildings to reach level five, just two more. And then we can build a switch on factory, which I think has something like 500 jobs. So that's that will use all of our high tier workforce. High skill labor availability actually just went up. So yeah, so that'll use all of that once we get it. It's nice to see though all our little buildings appearing. Yeah, it is six all the way down. Anyway, we're gonna put another block, big old block, right in behind here. Potential six by sixes again. On the pedestrian street. 
So that's going to happen every now and then where smaller buildings decide to appear instead of the bigger ones. Don't know if I can really do anything about that. It might be because the ones that want to be corner buildings just happen to come in a certain way. Not too sure. But that might be alright actually. I don't mind if they're fairly packed in and I can fill in the in what's in behind them. Just as long as it overall makes sense and looks good overall. I'm happy enough. Anybody using this car park? One person at the moment. What about our overground down here? Uh, 13. Not much. What about the ones at the back? Not much there yet. Don't have to jack the prices just yet. How's the school doing? So, hey! Didn't expect this. An old factory converted into luxurious living spaces that spark joy in their inhabitants. A new signature building, the old factory condos. That's something I forgot about actually, which is the regular ones. The current Corundum condos and the old factory condos. Maybe we could have these beside each other. Are they the same size? No, they're not. But they would both fit. They would actually... Oh, it fits perfect. <laughs> yeah, let's pop it in. Let's go. So that's the Corundum Condos. A modern classic that puts a smile on the faces of inhabitants. And then the old factory. Sure, why not? Just stick it in, in the same spot. Behind the Grand Hotel. I think kind of cool, more ornate looking buildings. 3.2 million. We hit our large city. Looking good. Feeling good. Smelling good. Yeah, it's kind of nice to have these next to each other. Little fancy street. Is this Empire Street? No, that is. Well, you know, close enough. <laughs> now, I'm I'm confident a lot of this is from people just moving in. Because the population is booming, right? 300 per, per hour. And the first people to... Oh my god, the low rent just got immediately abandoned. Wow. Uh, but yeah, every time you build new buildings, you just see an influx of cars and people coming in by train and stuff like that. So I have no doubt that that's what's happening. Oh my god, look at this. Yes, that's what we like to see. How many people is that? 387. Wow. So there's a lot of people trying to get to the other part of the city. These guys will be going in closer. So what about the train station? I imagine the bus stop there is going to be super packed. Yes, it is. Yes, indeed. How many is that? 942. That's a record for me, for sure. Even in City Skylines 1, I never had that much. And these buses are super full. Tell you what, we got to increase the buses then, the capacity of these guys. 61% for the Hawkstown Link service. Roll out 14 buses, please. Uh, and let's see, do we have anything else in terms of super high capacity? These ones are always, I've always been a little bit high. We can add another bus to that one. Yeah, I think it's all just people that are trying to get so many dogs. And this person here, oh no, they do. I thought she had no neck. <laughs> But yeah, obviously the idea is like, they'll just get the train. That'll be perfect, right? The train's capacity is 850, so everyone just pile on there, hop around, you'll be on the other side of the city in no time. Uh, but for now, people are piling in via car, or they're trying to get the bus in, which is going to take a while. So, while I'm waiting, I'm just going to clean up a little bit of the, uh, the grass and stuff, like I said. So we do some developer tool shenanigans. If we go surface... Uh, we can clip the existing surfaces. So I don't like clipping existing surfaces of um, zoned buildings because when they upgrade this, the clipping changes. But things that are just going to stay there, like parks and stuff, that's perfect because they'll never change. Hey, we got the switch on building. Sweet. Going to immediately put that to work in just one sec. So switch on. So basically, it's going to give us one college graduation chance, which is awesome because it's college, and that's exactly what we need in terms of increasing the chances of graduation at that level. We need that education tier the most. And then 2% industrial efficiency citywide. So again, until this place gets a bit of a rework, just going to kind of place it down roughly where those bus stops were and try not to block too many junctions. So just a big-ass electronics factory, right? So it's going to... Yeah, we have to see what it takes in wait for a company to take it on. Please don't be bugged. There we go. Hey, we got it. Wow, immediately 245 employees. So it's going to be taking minerals and plastics to make electronics. 1,500. Oh my god, it's huge. So the fuel plant was 627. The paper factory is pretty big too. I think it's like 1,200. Can have a quick look at that. Yeah, 1,350. So this is more than any of the others, but yeah, 750 for the well-educated. Man, that tier is so difficult to fill. But uh, that should give us a lot for the highly educated workforce anyway. 
All right, let's adjust the time of day and just have a last little look at the morning commute. So it is 6.30 a.m. Sun will be rising momentarily. It is November. It's chilly. Things are cold. Uh, we can actually see a lot of people at the bus station already getting the various different buses. Oh, this was Platform 6. They're actually numbered. That's pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, we have our underground station there, and the first buses are starting to roll out now. I say first buses. I mean, they do roll all during day and night. I've been thinking about doing alternating routes so that you can choose to have less buses roll out at night. I think that'd be kind of cool, only for the fact that it does delay the time, and they, they take about an hour in-game to actually, you know, roll out and get back to where they came from and stuff, so... Might not be super ideal, but we'll see. Oh, something else I was thinking here needs to be the bus route. A uh, bus only lane, maybe. Although I guess cars will just use it if they're going to turn, which is why I was so confused. It just seems to kind of defeat the purpose, but let's see. So we'll do upgrade down that way. Yes, yeah, so that's your bus lane. So buses, I guess, and stuff have priority for that one. Now you could also maybe uh, cut down on the amount of cars that are parking up against it. Maybe just using a few trees, just some standard trees there. Emerson Street. That's going to be people going to work now in the morning, right? Three. Okay, so that's not getting much use, much use yet. Uh, so our new routes would be the 103 to Concord has 31 passengers. The Hawkstown has 441 passengers on it right now. And the Fairview Loop has 248 on it. So that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy about all that. They seem to be getting pretty decent usage. 62% line usage. So this one's the one that's full up right now. And this is taking people around to the bus station. I mean, it just goes in a loop, so it's obviously going between houses, down to the, sum, uh, the sunset in terms of where the commerce is, and then also back around to the bus station itself, so... And buses, big unwieldy things. And then past the high school and everything. It's kind of cool. Down our new bus lane, and in you go. So just speed of time. I'm just curious to see how many people get off here. Pulling back into Platform 1. Or pl Platform 6, I guess. Yeah, a bunch of people got off, actually. Almost everybody. And then they're all queuing up over on this one. What one was that? That was the Hawkstown. So if they're going to Hawkstown, they're on platform five. Interesting. Kind of want to change the numbers now to 105, 104. That would be kind of cool. So yeah, we could do that. So although the Concord, oh yeah, no, it still works. So basically the first one here, this could be the 106. Then the yellow one is the 104. And the Hawksdown one is the 105. And that way it just matches the actual number that's on the building. So the 106, the 105, the 104. I know that doesn't really have to happen in real life or anything. I just think it'll allow me to remember which one's going where. So this is going to be, you know, it's easy to remember. It's like, oh, it's the 104 because it's at platform four. And that's going to Concord because that's what it says. <laughs> so that should uh, be a decent naming convention that we can follow anyway, I hope. So, only 13 on that one. So, yeah, let's follow one of the Concord ones then. Or, sorry, not the Concord ones, the um, Hawksdown ones. So, which ones are super full right now? This one's quite full. 81. Oh, he's in the wrong lane. You're going to have to make a quick switch. Oh, my God. So dangerous. Pretty cool. The city still sleeps. 8.15. Although some people, I guess, would be up by now. <laughs> A lot of people. Oh, yeah. Here we are. 8.30. The morning commute still kicking off. 268 people waiting at that particular stop. And at this one, we have 99. Buses are rolling through. And this is obviously just people trying to make their connection over to the other side of town. I guess a lot of people probably live here and also work on the sunset, just, you know, people work in those commercial buildings and stuff need to move over there. Uh, what about the train station? Is it busy? Not too bad. This one's kind of busy. I say kind of. We did have 900 or so people here last time we checked. So it's not nearly as bad right now. We seem to have flushed out a lot of the people that were causing issues. Look at this. Just the amount of parking, man. We need to, need to improve the public transport solutions to these areas. 
Uh, one last thing I've been meaning to do this whole episode was I wanted to add the mail storage extension and the extra garages in at the back. And then I'd set it, but I never did it, which was when we upgraded the antennas. I forgot to actually do that, so that will give them more bandwidth and higher range. People should be happier. Better internet for all. For relatively low cost. And then I had meant to add one somewhere down here. So there's a perfect little spot in right here. Just place that right next to a transformer next to the subway. So maybe a little alley that can cut in and we can turn it sideways. Might look a bit nicer. Although it does create an unnecessary junction and stuff doing that, I guess. But it uses the space a bit more efficiently. All right. There we go, South Bank. So, is this place doing better since we reduced the amount of cargo ships? Their usage has gone up slightly, so that's good. Yeah, I think that's probably fine. Got one coming in right now, the one that's going to Melcom, that's the one that's going west. Importing wood and furniture. How's our switch on factory doing? We now have 653 employees. We're about half full, 66% efficiency. Not enough employees are the main thing hurting us. Mail handling is quite low. Do we not have any mail up here? We do have one place for picking up mail. But I guess they need their own post office, really. It's probably what they want. Because mail accumulation is, like, really high. Yeah, so let's give them a post office again. Somewhat of a temporary placement. We'll move some of these things in the future, but that should sort them out. No pun intended. All right, so a bit disappointing. I was hoping to get some skyscrapers popping up, but yeah, just no demand for it until we start filling up because we did have demand before, but I think everyone's just prioritized taking these smaller buildings. So we did gain like five and a half thousand people. We're gaining 500 per hour, but we're just gonna have to let it continue to build as we sort out any traffic problems and other problems that may occur. And then we'll just wait and then start putting down some of the, uh, the high density, I'm sure, will start appearing once demand appears for it. So it's going to have to be it for this episode. It's 10 a.m. Quite happy with overall how the place is shaking out. Need to just obviously fill in even more shops and more things. If you have suggestions in any of these empty pockets or even in a few of these households we can demolish of things that I've forgotten or haven't thought of that we should put down in these areas, please do let me know because I just can't really think of what else could go here. Like I said, the hospital, fire station, and police station, somewhere over there. The trams, somewhere down here. They'll all roll out and be fine, but... As for just everyday living, it's just everything I could find in here, really. And we've kind of used everything, apart from an outdoor gym and a community pool. Not much else we can really use. Um, and then there's obviously just the big milestone buildings. It would be kind of cool, big Ferris wheel up here maybe, London Eye style. Could be kind of nice. And then the unique buildings, I suppose, would be good to unlock as well. We do have an Epicurean garden that's a mixed residential, so that could be actually good somewhere in and around here as well thinking about it but yep so other than that that's pretty much it uh if we just had a very quick look over some of these areas you can see i've largely tried to fill them in now with as much of that detailing work as i could filled in uh the front of this place although it needs some grass here as well actually brought it all the way up to the edge of the road uh, and what else oh and the same with this park as well so just try to fill it, fill it all in add a little bit of trees and stuff where i could but it's not done yet still needs a bit more detailing same with this area here nice little uh Flower beds, extra pathways, some extra grass and stuff put in there. But it is winter, so the, the sun is just going to be so low in the sky until we get back to about February. So we got two more months to go. All right, that's going to have to be it. Thank you very much for watching. I look forward to feedback on this one, and I will see you in the next one.